This is, this is the chemical kinetics podcast on reactions in which balancing equation and stoichiometry will be discussed. We will also calculate the air fuel ratio for complete combustion. The stoichiometric quantity of oxidizer, usually, usually O2, is just that amount of needed to completely burn, usually to carbon monoxide and water, a quantity of fuel. There's a fundamental concept used throughout combustions and relationships between the amount of fuel and oxygen oxidizer are viewed in relation to stoichiometric quantity. The stoichiometric react, uh, reactions for three hydrocarbons are shown. Methane, which produces one carbon dioxide and two oxygens. Propane, which produces three carbon monoxides and four waters. Decane, which produces 10 carbon dioxides and 11 waters. The same holds even for oxygenated species. In this case, the oxygen comes not only from the O2, but from the fuel itself. But nevertheless, in stoichiometric mixture, the atoms balance. For example, methanol, the sources of oxygen, are one oxygen of the methanol and the three oxygens of O2. Methylbutanoid, contributes two oxygens. Balancing a chemical equation uses the fundamental fact that during a chemical reaction, the number of atoms on each side of the equation stay the same. In balancing a combustion equation to CO2 and water, we have the special case which simplifies determining how much fuel, oxidizer, and products are needed to balance the equation. We basically need to find the value of x, y, and z. Essentially, one recognizes that all the carbon of the fuel goes to CO2, and all the hydrogens go to water. Secondly, all the oxygens on the right-hand side, the product side, come from the, f come from the fuel, and what is left over comes from pure OH. We simply need to count the number of oxygens on the right-hand side, and then subtract the number of oxygens from the fuel. The remainder comes from the O2 on the left-hand side. A typical problem is to find the stoichiometric quantities needed for mixtures of hydrocarbon in air. In this case, we are not only dealing with simple integer numbers for the quantity of balanced equations. For example, a typical fuel problem could be to balance the equation for a 90 octane fuel. This is a, this is a mixture of 10% heptane and 90% isooctane. If air is the oxidizer, we have to know that air consists of 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Nevertheless, the steps to compute the balanced equation are the same. We still have to balance the carbons, which go to, which go to carbon dioxide, the hydrogens, which go to water, nitrogen, which is unreactive, and then we have to backtrack and find the number of oxygens in air. To actually balance the equation of our example, we start with computing the number of carbons. On the left-hand side, the source of carbons is 90 Ron primary reference fuel, meaning a mixture of 10% heptane and 90% isooctane. This means that the effective number of carbons is 7.9. Notice it's a number between 7 and 8 carbons. This has to balance on the right-hand side. But, not only, but the only carbons on this side are those from CO2. So this means that there are 7.9 CO2 molecules produced. How many hydrogens are there? Using the same logic on the left-hand side, of, we see that there are 10% heptane and 90% isooctane. It means that 10% of the 16 hydrogens come from heptane and 90% of the 18 hydrogens come from isooctane. This effectively means that there are 7.8 hydrogens in the fuel. Once again, notice it's a number between 17 and 18 hydrogens. All the hydrogens on the right-hand side are in water. There are two hydrogens per water, so there are 8.9 waters. How many oxygens are on the left-hand side? Now we have to balance the oxygens whose only source are reactants in the air. Starting with the right-hand side, since now the molecule amounts are not fixed, we add up 
the oxygens in both carbon monoxide and water. This gives a total of 2.7 oxygens. This means that on the left hand side, the oxygens in air have to total 24.7. Since the oxygen molecules are only 21% of the mixture, there are only two oxygens and there are two oxygens per oxygen molecule, x times 2 times 0.21 has to equal 24.7. This means that 58.8 portions of air are needed to balance the equation. So the final equation looks like this. Notice that the number of nitrogens is the same on both sides and no computation needed to be done. From the balance example, we saw that there was 1 mole of 90 ron fuel to 5.8 moles of air. Since in the laboratory the number of moles cannot be directly measured, it is more often convenient to use units that are directly measurement, such as weight and pressure. More often than not in engineering, combustions and tables, fuel and air quantities are given in kilograms and pressure. For, fortunately, this is a simple conversion of, air, of units. The fuel-to-air ratio by weight is a useful measure representing a measurable percentage. To convert moles to grams, of course we need the molecular weight of the components of the fuel, namely heptane and isooctane. To compute the effective molecular weight of a 90 ron fuel, we take 10% of heptane and 90% of isooctane molecular weight, and this gives a total or a combined molecular weight of 112.8 grams per mole. The same principle is used to compute the effective molecular weight of air, which is 79% of oxygen, uh, nitrogen and 21% of oxygen. And this gives an effective weight of 28.8 grams per mole. Using the parameter of the last example, we have 58.8 moles of air, which means we have 1,693 grams of air. With one mole of fuel, this gives 112.8 grams of fuel. This, yield, this yields an air to fuel ratio of 15. Another quantity used is the percentage of weight of the fuel. This is simply the inverse of the air fuel rate ratio multiplied by 100. In this case, it's 6.6%. Here is a table from the literature of the different ratios of common fuels, gasoline, natural gas, propane, ethanol, methanol, and hydrogen and diesel.